Now, this is uh, the fly I'm going to be tying. This is a, a Clyde style fly. It's called the Sandfly Spider or the Gravel Bed. But it's, it's this is represents a fly that appears in the, the Clyde normally in May and June. Uh, high, uh, the reason the name given it, it, it hangs about the sandbank gravelly beds and the fish too are very attracted to this fly and the pattern I'm going to be tying this is out of a, a book called Let's Fish the Clyde by Bert Sharp now it's one of the best books you could get on the Clyde as far as I'm concerned it's one of the first books I ever read on dry fly fishing so but anyway to tie it now he recommends a size 15, which is a old uh, size fly, uh, or sized hook, sorry. I'm using a size 14, uh, and I'm using, I'll be tying on size 16s as well, so uh, it's best to have maybe two sizes. And the hook I'm using is this one, this is a filling mill, it's a dry fly hook, uh, as I say, a size 14. It's a barbless hook. Thread, I'm going to use black thread, this is Uni 8 I'm going to run the wax through it to get it started. And start at the eye of the hook and work my way down. Now you get to it just midway between where if you were like on the barb area, if you would say if you were a normal hook. And we tie in some mole. Now what I've done here though, this is natural mole mixed with some natural rabbit. Now it's just to make the when you've got a mole skin there's not much fur on it. Uh, the rabbit helps give it a last that wee bit longer, you get a bit more out of it if you use that uh, or blend it. It doesn't make any difference to it. Slightly dub it on. Wool's a great dubbing, it's a great dubbing to have and dry flies as well as nymphs and all the rest of it. So Anyway, nice fine body, just work the way up, tighten up when we need to. Just I'm going to give myself plenty of room for the hackles. Yeah. Two hackles, as I say, the dyed black. I'm using a cock hackle, a Chinese cock, and a partridge hackle. Now, I've got the Chinese cock hackle dyed black. Now, this fly, the legs are quite, it's quite a leggy fly. Obviously, this will help support the partridge hackle. So, I tie it with the underside facing my cell, just remove the fluff from the bottom. Catch this on. Away the waist. Now, what I want to do is get around about three turns out of this. You will get it easily. One front, one turn in front of the other. Now, the underside, the hackle's facing towards the eye, so you've got that natural curve. That's plenty. Now, what I'm going to do here is to wind the thread through the turns of the hackle. It saves a wee bit of bulk doing that and it's really strong, it makes it last much longer. Turn away the tip. Now I'm just going to draw back these fibres. Tidy up this area a wee bit. I tie in the partridge hackle now. You want the laying back, just force them back just now. It's easier to tie in your partridge hackle. Now in Bert Sharp's book, or Clyde book, he uses a brown partridge now. What I'm using here, some light grey, but if you look here, I'm using, this is the head of the partridge, and these are the small feathers at the top, and they're kind of grey-brown, uh, great hackles for tying these flies, I've used them up all the time. Now, the, the other good thing about it, they've got a really thin stem, and so they're ideal for dry flies, dry for nymphs, I mean, whatever, really, but they're really good. So don't throw away the head. So anyway, you catch the tip of the hackle because we tie in by the tip, so we take back the fibres that I want for the hackle itself, trim away the point, I leave a small bit just to tie in. Now, we got wax on your thread. So you can see why I've thrown back the fibres, makes it easier to catch in the tip of this hackle. Now, what I'm going to do here is take my thread right up against it. Take your time. I'm going to get back to my small hackle pliers. And these are just a light pair of hackle pliers that 
not a lot of pressure to hold just turn this one two I say one that's quite a leggy fly now don't exaggerate the legs of you but you can always take fibre off you can't add it on so once I'm happy I get to this point cross the thread two or three turns in and then throw away the waste and again I'll put a wee bit of wax on my thread just draw the things back and tidy the head area up come in and put finish tighten up trim away your thread now just come in a wee touch of varnish on the head all the way around now as I say some would say that was slightly overdressed but as I say you can always take some of it off when you're on the water uh, I don't find I don't find I think it actually suits it like this. This type of last fly does do a bit of skating on the surface, so uh, you can exaggerate by this will allow you to do that. I'll just make sure the eyes clean, and then I'm just going to lightly bring out these fibres as soon as I draw them all back. There you go. Now there's the support of the black hackle at the back. Now what will happen is when you're fishing this, this will collapse meaning sit flat. I encourage that by using the, the floating just to lift these fibres so it sits, sits slightly flat. but to be honest with you, the spread of these fibres holds it really up and that's what you want, you want to just lightly cast it try and keep as light a hook as you can and these hooks are ideal there's a few hooks you could use so anyway, there's your that's the sand fly spider or the gravel bed which I would certainly recommend if you're coming to the Clyde and usually May, June but there are some around just now so I hope you enjoyed that mm -hmm.